Thanks for joining to review this video on the Dell R12, the Aurora. This is an RTX 3080 build, and we're going to quick fix it so we get the graphics card repasted for whether mining or gaming purposes, get the temps way down as a result of this relatively easy adjustment. Here's the machine out of the box. As you can see, nothing installed. A little background on the machine, 16 gigs of RAM, just going through the config for you to so get an idea of what we're working with. Installed the latest graphics driver, kind of entertaining. Says a great time to upgrade. Yeah, you can't buy one. That's kind of uh, entertaining. So out of the box, here's a few screenshots. You'll see we're around 106 degrees on the memory temp. And by default, we're only getting around 86 mega hash per second with the default clock and memory settings there's a screenshot 106 degrees we're smoking pretty good out of the box this is clearly not going to work for intensive gaming or mining on the long haul a couple more snaps of the temps 50 degrees base give or take and i think it's about time we look to make some adjustments here so first thing we'll do is get into the memory clocks so we're gonna go minus 200 on the core clock for the memory. And then for the memory clock, we're gonna boost up to around 1200. This will improve gaming performance as well as mining performance, hence increasing dollars. In addition, I like to run the fan speed at 100% and cut back the power limit. The power limit on this 3080 on my other machine, I set it 73, seems to work fine. So we're going to go 73, we're going to manually set the fan speed to 100, click that little A icon, manually drag it over to 100, go ahead and apply, that's the checkbox icon, and then go ahead and save that away to one of the presets, there's five of them, we'll just save to a couple, just for overkill, make sure we don't lose it, and upon doing that, graphics card went a little nuts, caused the uh, mining to halt. But after doing that, you can see our temperature is now increased because we're overclocking the memory. But you see here that the computation is still at 85, 86 mega hash per second. That's because we're just ra railing here 110, 108 on the memory junction. The memory's just smoking right now, so it's, it's throttling. We need to do something about that. So here's a few screenshots again of what it is we're working with as a base. Again, 110 degrees, not going to cut it. So we'll go ahead and make some modifications to things. Um, a quick review here in terms of some of the background of the, the temps, the fan settings. We're 43 degrees in the case. We're going to swap out a fan today as well. So showing you those background pieces of information. Alienware, I like to customize the fan setting, just max it out at 100. This thing's be mining at the moment in between some video game stuff here and there, but generally mining for a little bit while the moment's hot. So crank the fans up to 100%, customize it. Again, you see we're still at 42 degrees. Uh, this thing just wails noise. It's really loud, um, but we're going to go ahead and swap out one of the fans at a minimum uh, to make that quieter. So with 100% fan, you see we're on 38 degrees or so in the case, but unfortunately those junction temps are still out of control, 108, 110 degrees, and we're only getting around 82 mega ash per second. There you can see our updated uh, settings that we're going to roll with here. And you see here we're still smoking hot by default. So, time to make some changes. Here's the case to open the case. Flip the levers. There's a couple of them. Flip them up. And then ultimately grab a screwdriver. Uh, undo the single screw on the back. And then once you have the screw out, there's like a latch underneath there that you kind of push up and out, something along that line. We'll go ahead and do that. And then the side panel come off. So release the panel. And then we'll go ahead and get the power supply flipped up for easier viewing. Uh, 
All right, top of the case. Again, you can see the big power supply there. It's actually pretty beefy. It's around 1,000 watts. This is the water-cooled version of the Aurora R12. Highly recommend going water-cooled. These things are a hot box as it is. I can't imagine not going with water-cooled without water-cooled on this thing. All right, got the power supply up and out of the way. There's the thing beauty, the old RTX 3080, the unobtainable. We are going to, having only owned it for probably two hours or so, we're gonna go ahead and ruin it already. So first thing, remove the uh, couple power connections going to the card. Clearly you wanna ground yourself a little bit somehow, you know, in terms of touching some metal before you start monkeying with the card here. All right, so we got the power cables out of the way. Remove this uh, brace, it's just plastic brace thing. Just dig it, toss it away for a moment. And then we're gonna go for this notch that's on the PCI Express interface. We're gonna go ahead and tap that downward. That will deselect the card, deseat it, so that we can pull upward and get the card out of the case. So you see that little tab kind of near the middle of the card. That's the thing that we just press down on. That will allow us now to kind of freely pull up and remove the card. All right, card comes out. Everyone complains about Dell. Tell you what, this card seems to be pretty darn good. Even though it has two fans, don't let it fool you. We're going to achieve ballpark 86 uh, degrees or so. Initially, maybe even the 70s, we'll see. So that's the card itself, the wonderful 3080, and we're going to destroy it soon. But before we do that, let's get this uh, front fan swapped out. So the front fan is noisy as all can be. Um, Airflow is pretty decent, but it's really noisy. It causes a racket. So we're going to go ahead and swap it out for a different fan. As you can see, it's in a holder. Just go ahead and unplug it. And uh, we're going to remove the old fan from that plastic casing and throw in an aftermarket, quiet, well-regarded fan. So snap all the tabs out. This thing should eventually pop out. We'll cut to the chase here. There we go. All right. ABC special. Um, yeah, that might just find its way to the garbage bin in a second. And then we'll swap in something a little more decent. Note the direction of the fan, it's pulling air in. So Noctua to the rescue. We're gonna go ahead and throw in one of these uh, fans here. Placed into the case, get the snap in there. Tuck the cord underneath for cosmetics and just making sure it doesn't get in front of the fan and get caught. With the fan connected, we're going to go ahead and uh, move forward here over to the video card next. But first, final glimpse of the case here with the new fan installed. Again, remember you want to have that fan pointing air in you're trying to bring air into the case from the front this is the 3080 see the screw layout the key here at the start is to make sure that when undoing the screws it's not as important as when you're replacing them but go opposite corner so one corner opposite corner go to the opposite corner opposite corner for those black screws with the spring specifically because those are the ones holding down the tension load to get the actual graphic chip the best seated connection to the metal plate. These other ones just do many order, probably doesn't really matter. Most of the screws are the same. The two end screws have a little different thread pattern. The inner ones have a bit of a gap, um, but overall it's not a big deal. Pretty challenging to mix up. You see here we've got some pads for some of the memory to make it thermally conductive to the plate. A lot of folks talk about replacing these pads. I don't recommend it off the bat. I mean, it seems to be doing just fine with this uh, paste replacement. So uh, just stick to the paste for now. Don't bother with pads. Just extra hassle that may not be necessary. 
So here, gently uh, lift off the uh, Magic the 3080 here. See a nice little bit of goo there of paste. Looks like they use a pretty scientific method getting that stuff on there. Now, interestingly, you'll see here that where the chip is, it, it it's metal. It should be like a conductive plate, but there's no contact between these two metal surfaces. Instead, we have stickers. So since the stickers aren't very conductive, we're going to go ahead and tear those bad boys off there. Peel one away, peel the other away. Uh, once we're done peeling away those wonderful, not so conductive stickers, we'll clean it up a little bit with some rubbing alcohol, ice purple alcohol. Um, I don't think it really matters what type, just, just clean it up, get the stickiness away. And second sticker is out of our way. All right, rubbing alcohol, good enough. Q-tip, whatever you have in mind. Some people like to use coffee filters, things like that. That was just a little flashback of what the original looked like compared to what we're going to do now to this thing. So rubbing alcohol, go ahead and clean the surface. It's sped up here. Um, just again, get the surfaces, make sure it's free of debris and oil, especially. Just get into some spots. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. We're not trying to win any prizes here. Get it clean. Knocked you a paste. Honestly, all these pastes are more or less the same. When I did the other unit, the R11, I think I used Arctic Silver 5 that was like 20 years old. It seemed to do fine. It's getting memory temps of uh, low 80s, like 82, 84. Um, this stuff might be a little more higher quality and fresher. So we might be able to get a lower temp on this one compared to the R11 case that I perform the same activity with. I also have more paste available this time, so being a little more generous on this one. Nothing scientific here, just throw enough paste on there to do the <laughs> do the job, use a judgment. That's what I'm using for today. Take a look. And once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and mend them back together again. So the key here is just try to make sure to line up the holes to the graphical interface the first time so you don't slide that paste all over the place just try to keep it pretty isolated um so there once you got the holes uh, lined up pretty well you'd be in good shape and then it's reverse order in terms of throwing the screws back in okay so we'll speed up the tape again at some point here zap in some screws Again, you don't want to be rubbing your feet all over the place when you're doing this. I mean, you go ahead and touch something uh, grounded once in a while so you don't uh, zap your prize possession uh, 3080 card. Uh, zap all this on here. And uh, away we go. Okay. Now we've got the other uh, pad back on here. The conductive plate. So that's working out uh, well. The end here is to make sure that when doing these black spring-loaded screws that you're doing them in opposite diagonal direction. So like a crisscross pattern. And that way it more evenly seats the plate to the chip and might increase the success of... Uh, a more smooth connection between the plate and the paste. Probably not the end of the world if you don't alternate, but just it's best practice. So I give that a go. All right, so we got all the screws in place. Now it's a matter of getting this modified updated card back into the case. That's a little preview again of what we had from before. So that's the, the modification and, uh, now we're moving on to getting it back in the case. So just reverse steps. Um, when you press in the card, just make sure that that seats well in that, that clip that's in the center portion of that PCI Express connection that it kind of clicks into place, if you will. i uh, got the brace bar, got the wires back in place, click in the power supply, make sure everything's kind of snug, should all snap together. And then go ahead and grab the side panel. It snaps into place. Flip the switches down, put the screw back in, unless you like it when kids reach the fingers in there. 
And there we go, back to the basement where these things are just kind of mining away um, while the going's hot, and then we'll use them for video games again. Here now you can see it's 28 degrees Celsius before I think we were in the 40s or so. Um, so we dropped temperature on the case itself. And now the moment of truth, first time firing this thing up, how do we do in comparison before? Suspense, uh, 98 some odd, 99 mega hash a second. So I'd say that's an improvement. Again, we've got the same settings, minus 200 plus 1200, 73 on the fan. And our memory junction is down to 74. Not too bad. We were at 110 before. So uh, yeah, 76 maximum so far. We'll let it run a little bit. I can tell you that we had this thing running for you know, a good couple hours and it seems to be kind of steady stating around 76 for the moment. So it's a little better than my original case, the R11, but that's probably because I had more paste available and some argue that this NH2 or whatever the whatever it's called is supposed to be a little better perhaps than, uh, than Arctic Silver. But uh, yeah, that's the scoop there. So not only is the case a little quieter, it's running cooler overall. So the overall environmental temp is lower and the mining throughput and hence your gaming, if you're into the gaming, um, will also be uh, more appropriate. Here we're at what, 78 or so on the memory junction as a maximum. So that's after running for some time. So yeah, 9,900 mega hash a second in there somewhere. Uh, quite the improvement memory junction is well below throttle limits so that'll wrap up uh, the video here just to give you a little uh, insight into the other unit the other unit's been running for weeks it looks like it's at 84 it's kind of where it settled in on the memory junction on the 3080 this r11 3080 um, again i didn't have as much paste available for that one so it was a little more hack job ish but it does the trick i'm not going to go in there again it's close enough and then I also ended up purchasing a, a uh, Strix unit, one of these uh, Asus uh, units from, from Best Buy as well. And I'll show you that in a second. But here, this, this R11, I swapped out more of the fans. So I did three fans in that one, and that's why it's 34. It's a little, a little cool as well, running pretty well. This is in a basement, mind you, so it's you know pretty cool uh, environmental temp as well. And this is this uh, Strix unit. So the Asus unit from Best Buy, 3080. It's a uh, ballpark, same price as the Dell, like 18, 900 bucks. And uh, you can see here that we're running around 96 at the memory junction. I'm not gonna mess with the card at that point. Um, it's, it's not performing as well as the Dell. I'll just say that. Um, you know, it, it, it's getting the metrics, but technically the temperature is running a little, little hotter in comparison to the Dell. Um, and then again, after a few hours, it's 78 degrees in the R12 that you just walk through the uh, update with. All right, that's all guys. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video and hope that your update to your Dell machine works out well. Best regards.